now onto this week's topic, social media, a place where people with low self-esteem go to post pictures of themselves that other people with low self-esteem can see them and feel even worse about. <laughs> As you know, how Snap Inc. went public recently in a highly anticipated IPO. But what is Snapchat about? The company is best known for it, Snapchat app, which has primary features. Users can send self-destructing text messages, messages, photos or videos to each other, mainly known as snaps. Users can post stories that are viewable by all your friends for 24 hours. And users can save these snaps or stories into their, uh, into their memories, another feature of Snapchat. Basically, it's just an app for teenagers to share their dick pics. <laughs> the social media industry is a really, really hellish one, as this business consultant is going to tell you. First, note that the threat of new entrants is low. This is largely owing to the network effects inherent in social networks, as well as uh, the difficulty in attaining a critical mass of users. Furthermore, note that the bargaining power of suppliers is low, owing to increasing uh, competition and also commoditization within the cloud computing industry. Furthermore, we believe that the threat of substitutes is low as few alternatives offer the convenience and richness of a social media platform. However, the bargaining power of buyers is high as users possess little uh, switching costs that will allow them to easily move between social media platforms. Similarly, competitive uh, rivalry remains high. Large incumbents like Facebook uh, possess an incredible ecosystem as well as excellent R&D capabilities that allow them to uh, keep up with, if not surpass their rivals. So as a result of this high degree of rivalry, as well as low switching costs, we believe that uh, going forward, social media companies will experience some hiccups when it comes to attracting and keeping its users. Oh yeah, I'd say social media companies like Snap will experience more than just some hiccups in the future when attracting and keeping customers. First of all, with regards to competitive rivalry, there are 20 social media platforms today with more than 100 million users, each shamelessly clothing each other. Just last August, Facebook's Instagram introduced Instagram Stories, a rip of Snapchat's feature named, you guessed it, Snapchat Stories. Facebook is so good at copying, it later went on copy itself by cloning Instagram's clone into Messenger, WhatsApp, and Facebook. But that's not all. Snapchat users have almost no switching costs to leave the platform and go for something else. While network, network effects add intangible switching costs, most of Snapchat users' uh, networks are replicated somewhere else. For example, in fact, 72% of Snapchat users use Messenger uh, from Facebook and 54% use WhatsApp. So since August, analysts have reported declines in viewership of Snapchat stories range from 50% to as much as 40%. In fact, Snap recorded user growth slowed down to 3.2% in Q4 2016, from just 7% a quarter before. What's the reason? Surprise, surprise, high rivalry and low switching costs. Hey, look, Evan, it's not that bad. This guy, John Oliver, is just a comedian. Look, Snapchat is a valuable platform. We have 158 million daily active users on our app, and they spend 30 minutes every day on our app. And that's the reason why they love our app so much. We are the only platform that provides them with real life, ephemeral experience through technology. And look, 53.4% of our users are actually from the 18 to 34 years old category. And 60% of our users actually come from the top 10 advertising markets. In fact, we have found that mobile advertising is set to grow from 86 billion to 196 billion by 2020. And this shows that we have a valuable resource here. Then, sure, Bobby, you can even say that our platform is rare then. Facebook may have 757 million daily active users, but our unique value proposition that allows users to ephemerally share their daily life experiences can't be found anywhere else. I mean, who's gonna post an authentic, imperfect picture of themselves on Facebook or Instagram? Obviously, no one. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and even Messenger may have copied our Stories feature, but we are so much more than that. Look at our stickers, geo filters, face swap, and Bitmoji technologies. But who knows how long it will last? We are so easily imitable. I mean, we do have patterns, but we can't pattern things like Stories or Messaging. The only things we can really pattern are things like implementation details. And there's nothing to stop Facebook from popping us at all. 
we are look at what they've done in the past. I mean, they've even tried to copy our entire app several times. We are only lucky that they haven't succeeded yet. If they ever do, we will lose our customers and we will lose our advertisers. Then what will be left? Hey, it's Evan from Snap. I'm worried about the threat of platform and development, especially from Facebook and its impact on our user base. What can we do? Huh? Two weeks? I'll give you one. Deal with it. Hi Evan, great to meet you. It's in a week, what's the solution? Right, we have something that you would like. Let me go through with you our two sided market analysis. By looking at our client's business model, we can see a two sided market with a user base on one side and the advertisers on the other. As with any social media company, Snap's users experience significant same side network effect. In fact, based on a study done by Amherst University Rotherham, 84% of Snapchat users were introduced to the platform by a friend and 75% of current users have referred at least one more person onto the platform. But what drives this same side network effect? Mm -hmm. Take a look at this diagram. As you can see, Snapchat lies in the middle of this value chain, intermediating between its users' content creation and also its distribution via direct chat to friends, stories to the community, and also to memories. So actually, since its founding, Snapchat has released an extraordinary amount of new features. And this was what fueled its growth rate of 7% just two quarters ago. So looking at the success of Snapchat's past features, we can see that users flock to its platform because it enables them to create unique content and share them. This was what made Snapchat popular in the first place. However, um, its user base is actually not as big as that of, say, Instagram. And when these features were copied, uh, Snapchat's growth rate immediately plummeted to just over 3%. This signals the need to build better lock-in and also enhance network effects into its platform. On the other hand, advertisers experience significant cross site network effects. The attractiveness of Snap's user base lies not in the quantity, but rather the quality of its users. While Snapchat does have fewer users than Facebook, 53.4% of Snap's user base is aged 18 to 34 which is a key demographic for many advertisers. This is why Snapchat could charge up to 700000 a day for their sponsored lenses. One key example would be Tacos Bell Snapchat sponsored lens, which received more than 224 million views. And all these Snapchat users tend to play with sponsored lenses for an average of 20 seconds. We can see that advertisers do value Snap's user base significantly. Hence, Snap users' base should be treated as the subsidy side, while the advertisers demand side. The stronger the Snap user base gets, the more advertisers will value its platform. This is why we have focused our solution on maximizing the same side network effect for Snap's user base. Great, let's discuss more in the boardroom. Look, Evan, unique ways to create content is what drives the same site network for Snapchat user base and is thus crucial for Snap's value generation. Of course, you already know that. I have come up with several innovative ideas to enhance user content creation. The key problem is that, as you already experienced, other social networks have easily copied those ideas as well. What is truly vital is not just creating more or better ideas, but ensuring that these ideas contribute towards making Snapchat a more resilient platform to imitation. Furthermore, these ideas don't need to appeal to everyone. Rather, they must enhance same-side network effects for your subsidy side, Snapchat's core demographic of highly engaged youths that advertisers crave to reach. These in aggregate will make your ecosystem more robust and also will mi mitigate the risks of uh, platform development. Therefore, we believe that hardware and even Content creation methods that cater to the youth population are the solution to this. For example, we create an enhanced version of the spectacles you are wearing, a 360 degrees camera, or even a handheld drone. Sounds good, but how does this really help us? Two reasons. First, integrated hardware will enhance same side network effects for Snapchat users. 
Dedicated users will be empowered to create more unique and creative kinds of content more conveniently. This will create a more vibrant community that can sustain itself and organically draw in more users. It can also act as a simple lock-in that raises the switching costs for dedicated Snapchat users and the networks that follow them. Given that Snapchat users are on the subsidy side of the two-sided network, Snap can create simple hardware that focuses only on the core functionality and sell them at low prices. Youths are more likely to be early adopters, and they will enjoy the latest and coolest tech that Snap can create. And this can ultimately increase the stickiness of Snapchat as a platform. Second, by integrating hardware into your platform, you raise the threshold that other social media companies must meet in order to replicate your features. For example, do you need to develop significant r and capabilities, establish facilities for manufacturing, or even manage a distribution network for all their products? While this is not impossible to do, you require large investment both in time and money. Even if they manage to copy all of that, their hardware will have the same synergy as that of Snapchat. Either their platform will be different, have different features, or the core demographic will be different. Brilliant. Bobby, I've come up with a great idea. Hardware enabled content creation methods targeted at our core demographic. After looking at the industry landscape, the resources we have, as well as the nature of our two sided market, I've realized this is the best way to create value for our users. Wow, Evan, that's an amazing idea. No wonder you're CEO. Imagine the types of possibilities we have in the future. We can create professional versions of our hardware so that marketers can create better advertisement. Or, or we can even open up Snapchat to hardware vendors so that they can create better types of product. Hey Evan. It's Evan Snapchat. Yeah, can we get back to you in two weeks? He yeah. hung up on me. Oh. He said we have seven days to come up with a strategy for them. It's impossible. Don't worry. We have our secret weapon. Our 4x4 McKinsey Matrix. Mm. Here it is. Oh, that's good. Hardware.